Welcome back. We are continuing with our Indianomics series on Indian economy in 2025. And joining me today is yet another star economist, Upasna Chatra, chief India economist at Morgan Stanley. Upasna, good morning. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, Bill, first up, your growth forecast for next year, that is FY26, not calendar 25, but FY26 is 6.5%. Does this bake in the likely... Uh, you know, tremors we may face if there are tariff hikes in the U.S. How much of it is baked in? Or do you see downsides if there is an onslaught of tariffs? Hi, Lata. And thank you for having me. Um, so, yes, our forecast for fiscal 26 at 6.5%. Uh, assumes uh, that there will be some increase in tariffs by the incoming U.S. administration, but those would be still country-specific. So our global team, both on the econ and the policy side, um, you know, uh, the assumptions that we've used in our year-ahead outlook is that there will be an increase in tariffs for China and also bilaterally for some other major countries such as Mexico or, or the EU. Uh, we are not assuming specific tariff hikes for India in these numbers and also not assuming that, you know, there is a case for uh, or an implementation of the universal tariffs as uh, have been discussed uh, in the past. So those are not baked in our base case. Uh, if that comes through, yes, there could be more downside to the 6.5% number. Okay. So this is the base case. Uh, uh, Trump can engender some uh, downside surprises if it happens. Fine. Let me uh, also come to the currency. And maybe I'm asking, uh, I'm making an unfair question because this should be to your currency strategist. But I was a little intrigued that your currency forecast numbers uh, don't go above 85. It is 84 for the current year average. 85 for FY26 and then it goes down. Actually, the rupee appreciates to 81 in FY27. Can you explain? Because uh, there, there is a school like Goldman Sachs tells us that they expect 85.7 also uh, in uh, 2025. Uh, yeah, so uh, yes, these views are made by a currency and FX strategy team and they uh, they do include, you know, a fair bit of what they think about how the US dollar would uh, move. Uh, so in the near term, there would be US dollar strength, but yes, you probably will not see that too much in the rupee dollar uh, moves or the forecast that we have in our numbers, uh, primarily with the view that we do think, uh, and as a, as a both on the econ and the strategy team, that uh, there will be a case for the rupee to get defended and the volatility to be lower. Uh, so our view is that uh you know, given that the fundamentals still remain pretty okay for the rupee and the FX reserves and generally the trend that we've seen in the past of RBI wanting to intervene to reduce volatility, uh, we do think that rupee will be therefore more range bound uh, rather than, you know, depreciate at a faster pace. So uh, that is what calls for our view in the near term. Okay. Well, any FPI will give, it, give an arm and a leg if there's only going to be 85. But uh, right now we are already sitting at 84 and a half. And there is a fear that it can, you know, go to 85 and a half also. Uh, now let me come to the uh, growth forecasts. Even for the current year, you are expecting the uh, uh, growth to be 6.7%, which means you're not buying the RBI uh, forecast for the second half. They are sitting at something like 7.3, 7.4 for the second half. You don't think that's happening? Um, no, so our numbers were earlier 7%, Lata. We reduced them to 6.7 in this uh, round of year ahead outlook. But most of the cuts are concentrated in the September quarter. So, you know, that is the key debate right now. Uh, September quarter growth and high frequency data have been uh, showing sort of a broad based deceleration. So we do think that September would be weak. Our numbers are going to be weaker than the 6.7 for September. We are at about 6.3, you know, probably where consensus is also right now. For second half, we do expect a rebound, but probably not where RBI is looking at. This is what they've published as of, as yet. Uh, so our view is that you see growth picking up in second half, but probably settling more in that 6.7, 6.8 range rather than higher than that. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me now come to your uh, inflation forecasts. Your inflation forecasts are pretty benign, but for the current year, you're still expecting 4.9. Uh, 
Uh, that's a big jump from Reserve Bank's four. No, Reserve Bank's four and a half is going to get revised because obviously they were not prepared for the six percent plus uh, in the month of October. But four point nine would mean that uh, inflation really is not falling off. Um, yes, so I do think that the near-term hump in inflation that you know RBI has also highlighted, we were all expecting. But I think one is that the level is higher. Uh, than what we were expecting by probably 40, 50 basis points odd for both September and October. And then the deceleration as it sets in will therefore just take a little bit longer given that you've seen us uh, somewhat of an upside surprise. And it's more mathematical than anything that you will then see numbers being higher. So when I look at monthly data points, you're probably looking at uh, November print, which would still be close to say five and a half. Uh, it will start moderating from December because of the seasonality and the winter month uh, impact on vegetable prices, etc. But uh, as of now, at least what we think the numbers for December, Jan could still be around the 4.8 to 5-ish levels or probably around 4.8 rather than meaningfully lower. So uh, I think it's a lot to do with food inflation and food inflation volatility than anything else. I think, uh, you know, headline X vegetables or core will still be well behaved but headline per se due to the impact of food uh, in the near term will also probably remain a little elevated than what we were thinking probably two months back. Okay. Uh, so the uh, uh, at one point in time, if I remember right, Chetan was saying that he's expecting practically no rate cuts. But now you all are penciling in some rate cuts next year. Yes, that's right. We did have a view of no rate cuts for pretty much all through this year. We have added rate cuts for next year. Um, so as of now, we expect the first rate cut in April. Uh, we do think, uh, you know, by then there will be more evidence of a moderation setting in an inflation. Uh, you know, December and Feb meetings probably with the trailing inflation numbers will be very hard. And that's why we think the first opportunity would rather be April than before that. Uh, just given how inflation numbers are going to be in terms of headline. Okay. Uh, let me come back to the growth question. Uh, again, I'm going back to Goldman Sachs because that was the first of our series on uh, India at 2025. The uh, fear about growth rises on several counts next year. Uh, the uh, fiscal deficit is going to be lower. I think even you are forecasting it lower. Plus, uh, you know, CapEx even this year may not reach the target. CapEx will be even less. It's not as if private CapEx has picked up, uh, you know, gangbusters. And on top of this, you could have a global slowdown, a Chinese dumping. So what makes you confident uh, about next year's growth? What are the positives for next year? See, I think uh, structurally, you know, the story for India uh, delivering around 6.5% growth is still uh, something which is doable given where probably macro balance sheet and corporate and financial sector balance sheets are. Um, yes, there will be fiscal consolidation, but it's unlikely to be a lot led by, you know, expenditure compression. Uh, CapEx numbers we've already seen moderate if we were to assume that second half picks up will still be lower than first uh, than last year. And last now year. probably probably seeing, yes, uh, but from going forward, probably you'll see CapEx numbers in terms of growth rate remaining where they are. Uh, you would see more shift in revenue expenditure in our view that would lead to the fiscal consolidation alongside pickup in revenues. Uh, and therefore, the fiscal drag on growth should be lower uh, from the fiscal consolidation bit. Uh, you will probably be seeing easing in the next year and that should help from a, you know just the impact of monetary policy on growth. And therefore, growth settling to around 6.5. I wouldn't say that you know um, growth is on an accelerating and upside uh, trend but uh, more like a settling on the 6.5 percent uh, normalized trend which should be doable given where the structural uh, uh, parameters are for the economy okay it's almost as if it is india's natural rate of growth okay very quickly then if you can tell me what will be the upside surprise and what can be the downside uh, surprises we should be prepared for on the upside, I think the key will be, as you mentioned already, on the private CAPEX side. Uh, we are seeing some green shoots, but yes, it's not not uh, at an exuberant level. Uh, so probably 
external demand uh, can come back as a big uh, as a, a big uh, as a bigger supporter to this overall end demand and that can help improve the private capex cycle which then i think you know leads india to a higher growth path or a growth trajectory on a more sustainable basis on the downside again most of the risks would emanate from the uh, from the external factors i think at the moment uh, what type of trade tariffs immigration policies we see from the incoming uh, us administration mm. will be important uh, again that may still impact more of the second half of the next year in our view because by the time it's implemented and it's flows through um, in terms of real economy variables there will be some lag but of course you know markets and sentiments will start reacting much before that but uh, from a from a real economy perspective probably second half would have more risks associated with what policies we see in the first quarter next year from us oh yes uh, that is the unknown unknown isn't it Okay, so 6.5, the natural rate of growth for India, not 7. Thank you very much, Upasana, but uh, that is still better than the Goldman Sachs forecast of 6.3. Uh, with that, we wind up on economics. Thanks so much for watching.